Fine if you set that uh, zoom thing about halfway, uh -huh. it's, it's a lot better. Continue. Take a real slow panoramic view all the way around to, the, to your right rather than to your left. All the way around. Easy, slow. Come around here and look at these birch trees. Huh? Slow to you is just it's fast. Just slow enough? Mm -hmm. You gotta go real slow. Then bend slowly back on them again, and then we'll stop it for a while. Okay, turn your foot. This just this thing looks fuzzy to me all the time. Maybe it is, I don't know. Yeah, 
There's a snowmobile right across the way over there. I wish that thing focused better. Watch out here, Kerry. We gotta go down the steep hill. Like Doesn't look like the Padre Island beach, does it? See, we got this ledge over here. That's where his aquaculture is, right out there. Right off this ledge. You see a little bit of ground fog starting to come in out there. And Now there's stakes right out there where that red ball is. When I was down here, when Jonathan and I were out here yesterday, those stakes were out of the ground 15 feet, out of the water 15 feet. Now you can't even see the tops of the stakes. This thing is absolutely... It's as fuzzy as it can be. I wonder if it's because the lens is getting dirty or something.
and he's bringing it into the beach, you're going to beach it out high tide, and then when the tide goes all the way down, we're going to load the gear off of it. Now she's grounded out right there. Are you gonna wait till it wait till it grounds out so you can get on it? Well, this is a rare day in, in June here, isn't it? Yeah. No fog. See the tides out there? What? Blowing of the tide. <laughs> yeah. Cold winter day in that diving boat. Yeah. You had some hairy times in there last winter, huh? Yep. Almost met the maker. Look over here, you almost bought the farm, that's what they say. <laughs> uh, close call. Tell us about it. Uh, it wasn't very far from here. It's only up about about a mile up the way. You get caught out in the middle of the channel. You know, you know when you talk up here like this, you it's boot, boot muddle up there, and it's up there in the weather, which is was, was so bad, we got some desperate, <laughs> some desperate situation. Old Cornell came along there and, and uh, yeah, we called the Coast Guard for us. Yeah. Is that right? Right. Six foot seas out there. We caught in six footers. About 40 mile an hour winds out of the south. Yeah. The tide was. Uh, well, actually, the wind was out of the north. The tide was coming in, so from the south, tide coming in against the 40 knot wind. Created six foot seas. And we didn't have any power in the boat. The engine was swamped over, and uh, we just had to drift along. The wind blew us so hard, we almost tipped over a few times. That's what you call fun and games, right? Poor Steve got seasick. Yeah. So, uh,. <laughs> so rough we had to sit on the floor just to keep the center of gravity down. Keep the weight down as low as possible. Yeah. We made it back. I noticed that. In the Coast Guard, I wouldn't be here now for it. <laughs> In the Coast Guard, when they finally towed us back, uh, brought us around and we got the boat back in the mooring where the dinghy is now. And uh, Steve was aboard the boat too. The Coast Guard couldn't bring us into shore. So we tried to make a swim, we tried to make a, in the small dinghy, we tried to get in the dinghy. Of course I had only one oar, I had my diving suit still on. And the dinghy tipped over. And Steve was up to his waist in water and I slid off the back of the dinghy and kicked in. And we made it back, we made it offshore over there and around the point. Luckily it wasn't real cold that day, probably about 40. You're around, around the point, you're talking about over here? Around this point here, yeah. We, the wind was, so, like I say, out of the north so strong that we couldn't row into shore here. It pulled us down there. Yeah. And we got ashore and pulled the dinghy up, and Steve ran home real quick like. I'd say, what did you pull? Maybe 38, 38 to 40 degrees that day. It's getting colder already. It's only 40 a little while ago, now it's 38. Yeah. Close to freezing. Yeah. <laughs> That's cold for Corpus Christi. <laughs> I can't remember what the temperature was. Maybe 35. 
I know it wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew it'd get colder. As this story progresses, it's good. I can just say this, it wasn't as cold as it had been in January. You'd have bought the farm for sure. <laughs> bought the farm for sure. We would have froze as soon as we hit the beach. I've had that happen before. It gets soaking wet and hit the beach and the wind is so cold it freezes your clothes real quick. Yeah. Like stiff. Do you ever think there's there got to be something about it, something wrong with somebody that makes, makes a living that way? Do you ever think about going to see the shrink? <laughs> <laughs> well, I couldn't imagine it for too many years straight. You know. When I come back, I'll uh, give it another try for one year, probably. Mm -hmm. We figure by then the scallops will come You're back. You're going to give it another try just to be sure it was as bad as you remembered it being? <laughs> Just has to bring back memories again. You know, you want to keep trying, you buy that farm sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, boats had a lot of eight years use. Well, we've had the boat actually seven years. Way in front of that corner, Kerry, is Lou Beck. Yeah. The orange balls, that's where the aquaculture is. No, most of it's down in this corner here. Can you get a good view way across the other side and see the salmon farm? Yeah. Throw it in. Maybe yeah. you can come to the boat. Maybe you can, if I hold this, uh, you can walk to the boat and go aboard the boat. Take a look inside the boat. Yeah, or well, we can cut it off and okay. start it again. This is the diving boat where we spend most of the winter. We can come inside and take a look. Steering wheels up here, engines in the boat in the back. Throttle control here. You can see it all in a moment. So. We heat the boat. emergency sometimes we listen this is a depth sounder right here and the transducer for the depth sounder is here when we want to take a reading we just drop this down like this into the water and then when we don't want to need a reading we use this of course to find out how deep the water is when we dive we just pull it up out of the way when we're not using it this is a motor kill and the motor's running if we want to shut the motor off we just flip the switch and of course we have to flip it back on when we want to start it and this is the controls and maybe you can get around and get a view of what it looked like looking out of the front of the boat as we're traveling along. Of course, the boat's beached up now. This is what I'm sure this is what we put our scallops in. Scallop bag. Yeah. I attach these to my weight belt. Pick up scallops, put them in the bag. You get several bags. They wear out pretty quick, though. If you get dragged along the bottom, you can see this has been dragged along the bottom, it wears out, but then we just put another bag inside it, you know, so the scallops won't fall out. These are scale baskets here that we put the scallops in after the day. The baskets are usually full. The four baskets we carry here would be equal to about uh, probably uh, four gallons, five gallons of scallops. These buckets scallop meat in. Each one holds about uh, 10 quarts, two and a half gallons. 
We figure a heaped up bucket is about two and a half gallons. A lot of times it's already getting just one heaped bucket. Probably average three, three and a half gallons during the season, three gallons. Out here we got the motor. It's 35 horsepower Evan Roof. Two gas tanks in the back, plus we have extra gas. I got extra gas on right now. We normally don't carry extra gas aboard. This area here is all heated. Mm -hmm. And we're looking out over the over the cockpit. Yeah, I can close the door. So this is what it looks like in the winter time. Of course, in the winter time everything's closed down because it's so cold. And when we're traveling, usually it's pretty windy in a lot of cases. So, but this will be how we steer right here. Stand here just like this. Usually, with, if it's a rough day, the legs just spread apart, keep balance. Usually tossing and turning about like this, or going up and down. Tell me about it. I've been on that. <laughs> You've been on this. <laughs> and this is about what it looks like, you know. Mm -hmm. Coffee cup stays up here usually. Got a compass in case we need a compass. This is a diver's compass, but we use it to, if the weather's real foggy, which we've had many days foggy weather. Just put it right up here in the bow and set the compass course. This is a map of the area, a chart that we use. To shows the different depths of different areas of the bay where we go. Mm -hmm. We're down here north of Beck. We go as much as seven miles a day. That's one way, so we'd be traveling 14 miles. So you can see quite a bit of the time is used just getting back and forth. We go to Pemaquan River, it takes about an hour and a half to get up there. So we spend three hours a day just getting up and back. Here's a dive for about five hours. Then rest time in between, a couple of more hours, so it's a full 10, 12 hour day. Some days we get back earlier. It depends on where we go. Of course there's areas we can go around here too that we can, uh, uh, just around the corner over to Cooper's Ledge, Cooper's Island, we can call up over there and it takes about 10 minutes to get there. That's a good thing about that, it doesn't take long to get there. Mm -hmm. Rear view mirror out in the back here so I can see approaching boats from the side since there is a blind spot back here. I can usually look around here and see if anything's coming this way, but we've had cases where boats have passed us on occasion. We've got a rear view mirror so we can see boats coming behind us. <laughs> Jonathan. Looking out the stern of the boat now through the back door. Looking at Jonathan, Carrie Ann, they're on the beach. <laughs> Jonathan's found something exciting over there. There's the gas can. Gas can, yeah. 35 Evan Road. You can see the top of the motor. Top of the water. And the clear water shining down in the water. And it looks like it's on the ledge. There's a hatch, it's a hatch that comes up right here. Pull it right up the driver's seat. Right There's like a lot of memory. Where'd you sit? It's right here. It's right here. You think you'd like to scallop on here, Karen? I've been on a few jaunts with him. Yeah. None of those real hairy. <laughs> Your toolbox. Tomorrow I'll take a lot of stuff off the boat. Yeah. Mignana. <clears throat> well, we're going to call it quits here right now. I need to. Uh, Documentary. If this, if this don't come out, we'll try something else tomorrow. If it does, we'll take some more. Sure, you get better at it every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that bothers me is the focus on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, adios for today. <laughs>